Hello, so in the first part I did the initial drawing. I also put in the background as well as some of the shading in the picture, which gives the picture some shape. Effectively this is an underdrawing which will eventually disappear as the detail is added to the picture. It is just there as a guide to help to build the picture up. Now in the first part I said that I was going to show you a way to put the markings in for the trunk. It can be quite complicated to sketch them in freehand. On the reference, it looks like lots of random patterns, and this can be very confusing. So what you actually want to do is to break them up into parts. So you have a top part, a middle part, and a bottom part, and then that way you can slowly start to build the picture up between them. Now what we want to do is to look for key parts of the picture. For example here, this area is ideal. It's relatively central in the middle of the trunk and also it's up towards the top. I would say this is a good place to start. It is also pretty much level with the eyes. If you want a simple way to get the markings in the correct place, just take a piece of scrap paper like this. And because I have done the picture the same size as the reference photograph, I can very simply take the piece of scrap paper, move it up to the position of the first marking that I want to use, and put a mark where it's going to be. I also put a couple of marks to show where the bottom of the picture is. Then line up the bottom marks with the bottom of the drawing, and transfer the top mark. If you are going to use a piece of scrap paper, just remember to erase the lower marks afterwards. So I'm now going to put a mark where the higher one is. There are lots of other ways you can do this, but this is relatively simple, as you can literally just use a piece of scrap paper. I am not going to do this to put everything in. It is literally to create something which is a guide. I am using the H pencil again, and as you can see, it's very blunt, and I'm using it lightly holding it away from the tip. And then I can literally just brush a little bit of tone on the paper. And if I need to erase it, I can do this quite easily with the putty eraser. So I just sketch in this bit, about here, and that will give me a good place to start from. And if I do a similar thing, but this time using two marks, and then transfer this to the drawing and sketch in the lines. Now the markings on the trunk can be quite confusing, as all you can see is lots of random patterns that make no real sense. So we need to simplify it. And the best way to do this is to break it down into lines. If you notice, we've got starting from here, one, two, three, four, five, and then there is just a final one at the bottom. Don't worry about the final lines in between. It's purely and simply because we want to make it as simple as possible, and then we will just add those later. A really simple way to get this loosely marked out is to use a piece of scrap paper. And if I take it up to the bottom of this one and line it up in about the center of the trunk, I will just put a mark there, a mark just there. And then I know that the top of the paper is the position for the first mark. One for there, for there, for there. And there is one about here. Again, go to about the center of the trunk and line up the bottom marks with the bottom of the picture. And then transfer the marks to the drawing as that gives the position for the lines. So I'm just going to make them stand out a little bit more as they are a little faint. 
Now the next thing that is a problem is when you look between the drawing and the photograph. The problem you have is when you look back from the drawing to the photograph is which line you are working on. So simply take a post-it note, peel it off, and what I'm going to do is literally stick it above the marking that I'm going to put in first of all. So now, whenever I look between the picture and the photograph, I know that is the line that I am working on. So basically, I am not going to worry too much about this. I am just looking at the angle that that mark goes. And it goes from just a little bit up on there, like that. But at the minute, this is just about getting the markings in the right place. Like I said, the H pencil is nice and light and can simply be erased. And then from there, I can simply sketch in a rough pattern, which I can then change a bit later if I need to. So now I can peel off the post-it note. I am not going to do the next one up. I'm going to move up to here, which corresponds with the top mark that we did. I stick the note on there. And again, because I am using the post-it note, I know that corresponds to this mark. I am going to look roughly where this tusk intersects here. As you can see, the top of this aligns up virtually with this bit here. Then I can put a mark in. And then sketch that in like that. Now, the reason why I'm not starting down here and then working up is because if it does go out, then what will happen is that it will just get worse as it goes up through the picture. By picking different bits to do, like doing down towards the bottom, up towards the top, then in the middle and so on, you can build up the picture slowly and then fill in the gaps. That way, if anything is out, it is only out by a minor amount. And again here, this part intersects with that part just there. And just take that up and draw that around. This does take time. So now, as you can see, the next one to work on is this one just here. So again, I take the post-it note off and move it down. And then again, I can see this one. It's just a shallow curve, which heads down into here. So you can see, I have started to build the first three in and now I can start to put in the remaining lines in between. Again, I stick the post-it note on the reference, and I can again see where everything goes. This comes out just below this area here. I can literally just sketch up and around. Remember, at this point, these lines are only rough. And from there, that comes around into about there. So I'm looking for the point on this side. So we've done that mark there. We've done this from here up into there. If I put a mark on there and then take it up and around, you can see that puts that one in. 
I don't need to do anything too fancy for that. I can see where that one is, just there. I now just have the one left to do. I just move the post-it note again. And as you can see, this comes out just down here. So again, roughly say put a mark halfway between these two lines here and sketch the line in. This is probably one of the worst subjects for things like this. But this principle for positioning markings can also be used if you are doing zebras, cheetahs, leopards, anything with markings or patterns on it. You can simply use this technique to get all markings in the right place. We have got those quite simply marked out and we have got the distances right between them. You can do more with the scrap and mark other bits as well. Or you can just use it as a guide to check that you have got something you have already sketched in position correctly. You can see I put a mark there. You could use that to put a mark in for the line that goes around. Or like I've done here, I'm using it to double check that I've got it right. And as you can see, it's in the right place. So now I am just going to concentrate on the top line and I'm going to reshape it slightly. Now a lot of the time with anything like this, if you make any slight alterations to anything, you don't necessarily have to erase it. You can literally work back over the line and you can see that's actually changing the shape of the line as I work over it. As you can see, I am just taking a bit of time to slowly build this up. The thing to do is not to spend too much time on this as it can be quite tiring. It is a good idea to take plenty of breaks. There are also plenty of other parts of the picture to work on that are less intense. For example, you could put some of the shading in to have a rest from this. As you can see, I have been working on this area just here and I am now going to move up to here. This is quite a complicated part of the picture for obvious reasons. The first thing I need to do is make it a bit simpler. So what I'm going to do is to isolate the area that I'm going to work on by using the post-it notes. And then I can see exactly where I am working. I know this part's been done and this part is to be done. So nothing else is a distraction. Also, as well, you can see this part just here. Is that part just there? So I just use another post-it note to isolate the part to the left. I am going to very loosely sketch this in. Now I am using a 2B pencil for this. It is not dead sharp, it is blunt. But I'm using a 2B because it is just a little bit darker and softer. And I can see what I am creating a little easier. All the time I am making alterations and changes. You are never going to do this without making mistakes. Equally as well, you're never going to get it 100% accurate. There are always going to be some parts that are slightly out, but as long as it looks right, that's all that matters. As I go across, I just reposition the post-it. You can see that I am holding the pencil away from the tip. I'm only using it lightly. I am going to use the putty eraser to make a slight change here. Now moving to the other side of the line, 
As you can see, the picture builds very slowly, but it literally just takes time. I slowly continue to build the picture up, working in small areas. Like I said, at this stage, what I am doing is still quite rough. This is quite a methodical process, but ultimately it is worth taking the time to get it right. Any areas that look complicated on the reference photograph just simply block out a lot of the surrounding parts as you can then solely focus on the areas that you are working on and you won't get distracted by the rest of the picture. Blocking all the wrinkles and furrows in is probably the hardest part of the picture to do. I always find that it is a good idea to work on the markings that stand out before slowly filling in the gaps with the less prominent ones. What I have been doing will give a good base for the detail to be built up over the top. Any materials that I recommend are linked in the description below. If anything is purchased, I will receive a small commission at no extra cost to you. This really does help to support the channel and is greatly appreciated. Any questions, leave them in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer them. In the next part, I will start to work on building some of the darker tones into the picture. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.